Hello, friends and neighbors. Hope you have your beverage of choice. I have some coffee this morning. This is a video that um, I saw an opportunity with to make regarding the psychology of correct sentence structure, communication, partisan syntax, grammar, a topic that you probably won't find anywhere else except on this channel. Now, this was prompted by a series of comments from a former student of mine. And in my eyes, I saw someone coming into my domain and issuing a challenge of sorts. Now, this is not someone that I don't know. This is not a stranger to me. I know this individual. I've done multiple workshops with them over the past three or four years. On and off, he would start learning and then stop and then come back and then leave. And so I'm very familiar with my perception of the way his mind navigates, the way he thinks about things. So that is why I'm doing this. If this would just be someone, just random person issuing some sort of challenge to me, I wouldn't even bother to dignify it with a response probably probably wouldn't see the light of day. But because it is who it is, and I know who they are, and I know their personality, uh, the way I perceive their personality anyways, the, what, the personality that they presented to me over the years, I decided to make this video because this video could help people in their journey with correct sense structure. It may add a piece that's missing, which I haven't covered as of yet on this channel, a piece of the psychology another angle to look at the fiction system. So what I'm going to do, and again, this is for the diehards. All right, if you're just a dilettante and you just like stories or, you know, you, when you start, when you hear me talk about grammar, you tune out, this, this is not for you. All right, this is for the diehards that are really seriously trying to get closure on this technology. So I'm going to take a look at a series of comments that went, we went back and forth with, and then I'm going to, add more Kuleana to it, which would hopefully benefit you, the serious diehard viewer and serious student. Okay, so at this point, this individual is a member and his membership name is Buddha24. And they say, greetings, hope all is well. I say this with love and respect. No disrespect here, just want some closure if possible. So they want some closure. That's what they're pre-qualifying their comment with. They want some closer, and they come with love and respect, meaning, I guess, that they have love for me. Now, to me, when I'm psychologically, when I'm looking at someone approaching me, and they have a question about closure, and they preface it by saying with love and respect, that's a red flag to me. That's like someone saying to you, with all due respect, you're a jerk. You know, they like set you up with like sort of padding and then they hit you with what they're coming with. So that, that's kind of the way I view things that people that preface comments like this. I have some issues with CSS CPSG. No kidding. I was curious. How about an ex how about a experiment? Give some proof of the effectiveness of CSS CPSG to people myself included. I am having lawful success with affidavits. So what this person's saying here is that they are having lawful success with affidavits, meaning they are participating, subordinating themselves to the fiction system. Lawful is the fiction system. An affidavit most certainly is fiction system because it's a no contract work. Anyone using correct sentence structure and they have closure on the grammar, would not use the word affidavits. That's fiction terminology. On the other hand, I applaud anyone who has success using anything. I'm a big fan of whatever works. I've made no secret of this. If you have success with fiction affidavits, if that's what gets them off your back, cool. No correct sentence structure necessary. Why are you here? I proposes. I proposes I send you, whoa, 
a affidavit with registered mail in plain English. It gives you 10 to 30 days to respond in your own affidavit in that time frame or everything in the affidavit is true. Again, this is a fiction, adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun document. You do your thing with correct sentence structure. Let's see if I take the affidavit into court. Can I get a summary judgment? I pay for any everything. One ounce of silver is what I will ask for in the case, or whatever you wish. Something very small, just an experiment. Let's see if you can get out of the unrebutted affidavit. For a unrebutted affidavit is truth in court. I would like to see if your system would work. Thoughts? Well, first of all, it's not my system. I don't own anything. I don't take possessorship of anything. I'm a steward of the grammar and an authority of the grammar because I know the grammar. And whatever you're proposing right here, I would never participate with because it entails me subordinating myself to a fiction system and a fiction judge. I don't get why people don't understand this. If you subordinate yourself to the system, then what's the point of using correct sentence structure? You're not your own authority. You're submitting yourself to someone else's authority by asking for a summary judgment. You understand what I'm saying to you, friends and neighbors? You file into court, you file an affidavit into court and ask for a summary judgment. You are subordinating yourself to another authority. You are giving someone else authority over you. And the other thing is, there is no, you cannot force someone to do something with correct sentence structure. I don't know how many freaking times I have to say this. And I say freaking just for effect, not because I'm angry or anything or frustrated. I've repeated myself multiple times. I've never known anyone to be able to force someone else, another contract party, to give them something, whether it's gold, silver, money property, whatever it is. The only thing I've ever seen correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar do is stop a trespass. Stop someone from trying to fleece you, from harming you bureaucratically, or in some cases physically. <clears throat> but that's all I've ever seen it do. So again, this is all fiction mentality right here. What this individual is outlining is complete fiction nonsense. Something I would never personally get involved with because I know it's rolling the dice because I'm submitting to someone else's arbitrary authority, which I would never do. I am the authority of my correct sentence, structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, document, contract, postal, vessel, court, venues. I am the document, contract, court, authority, i.e. judge of those documents of that court, not them. And this individual as in the past with the multiple workshops we've done, has never seemed to grasp this concept. Hence, they were unable to get closure on the grammar. They were actually a very good student up until the point when they started taking, they, they could not get past, with my perception as a tutor, with almost six years experience teaching hundreds of people, they could not get past the psychology of being their own authority, and also what a fact is. They didn't have a way to certify what a fact was. They couldn't seem to find a center to build from. They had no solid foundation of what a fact was. I would like to see, your, to see if your system would work. Again, not my system. Thoughts. Does the technology of CSS, CPSG use a etymology dictionary to prove fact-based terms? Etymology dictionaries are used to help certify, create a continuance of the evidence for someone's correct sentence structure, finite means in their dictionary. It's not the authority of the dictionary, but I guess it, in the terms that this individual is using, you could say that an etymology dictionary can be used to prove fact-based terms, meaning you're giving a continue to the evidence using a baseline. And that baseline is usually the earliest nativity root meaning of a particle of a word. And then you use several dictionaries if you want to, 
to create and craft the fact meaning that you want, that you participate with the fact in your construct. And in order for other people to contract with you, they would have to agree to your terms and conditions and meanings of those facts. Or you both would have to come together on a mutually agreed meaning of a fact. Otherwise, you wouldn't be contracting. How can that be proven? How can the earliest nativity root meaning of a word, earliest known nativity root meaning of a word be proven? Using an etymology dictionary. The fact that this is a math technology using a etymology dictionary for facts, does that make sense to me? Well, I can understand why, because this individual, again, has no center, no solid foundation of what a fact is. They don't have that checklist. Well, a fact must tick all of these boxes in order for it to be a fact. For me, you have to have that baseline going into it. Because if you don't, then you're going to end up like this and you're not going to have any. You're sort of going to be like a pinball being shot around a pinball machine by various flippers. Because you don't have a solid base of where to sit and make a position. So... A math technology using an etymology dictionary. Let's, let's, let's unpack that for a minute. Math cannot be used in and of itself as a communication tool. You cannot carry on a conversation just using numbers, unless you're a computer, I guess. Unless you have that kind of brain space. Normal people, everyday people, communicate using a verb, adjective, pronoun, Babble, whatever language that falls under. That's what they use to communicate. And you must use adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble to articulate math. In order to teach math, you have to use language. You cannot teach language using math. <laughs> you, however, you use language to teach math. Do you see the difference here? So I can see why it doesn't make sense to this individual because they don't, number one, they don't have a grasp of what the math interface is. And number two, it appears that they don't know what a fact is. How can these facts be proven? Where is the proof that someone 700 years ago used words like you claim? Well, there is a baseline established for everyone that, and that is the etymology dictionary. It doesn't matter which one, you use, whether it's etymologyonline.com, which is the one I use the most, or other books of etymology or whatever, you are going to find that they all come back to the same nativity root meanings, which is certification. And if you choose not to believe in those certifications, if you choose, that's a fiction term, believe, if you choose not to participate with those certifications as something that can be used as a continuance of the evidence for your finite means in your dictionary, well, then you're never going to really know what you're talking about, are you? Because you have no base from which to talk from. You have no baseline. You have established no position. Therefore, you have no position and can prove no position. So I can see why you'd be asking these questions, because you don't even have a foundation of what a fact is. Well, from my perception, you don't. I'm not assuming that you don't. I'm guessing that you don't, based upon the hours that we've spent together in the workshops and based upon the, the articulation of these comments. Also, the etymology book is written in fiction. Why give it any value? <laughs> Why give you any value? As if this math technology chooses what fiction grammar to value or not and when. Well, there are rules about particles and negation and, and positionals and lodials, but if you had closure on the grammar, you would know that. Is this rule one and rule equal? The book itself says it's a best guess. Which book are you referring to? I don't know what book you're referring to there. So as it is said, he who makes the claim carries the burden of proof. That is correct. Can this technology prove every word in the etymology book written in fiction are facts? Well, it depends upon what you credential as a fact. Etymology, as I've said again and again, and I'll say it one more time because I've already said it at least two times in this video. Etymology dictionaries are used to provide a continuance of the evidence 
for the finite means of the facts that we use in our correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, dictionaries. It's something you can offer someone else and says, hey, what? why does this, why do you give this word this meaning? And you can say, well, I went back to the earliest nativity root meaning of the particles of the word. And you can show them that in the etymology dictionary, or maybe another one, or maybe three etymology dictionaries. See, look, it's the same in all three. Two is certification, three is authorization. So I'm using that as a basis from which to draw my meaning of this word, to invest my meaning of this word, bank this value to this word. If you don't agree with it, if you don't agree with my sources, if you have a better source, if you, if you have a better meaning with a better source, please show me. And I'll, I'll incorporate that as long as you can provide a continuance of the evidence like I did. I mean, correct sentence structure, most people don't go around just making stuff up. Well, all right, maybe I speak too soon. There are lots of people going around using correct sentence structure, just making up their own meanings for words without a continuance of the evidence. But I personally like to use physical continuance of the evidence sources so that I can direct people back to where I got the meaning for a word, where I crafted, how I crafted and created my correct sentence structure, finite meaning for a word. I mean, you could all theoretically create a dictionary where you say, these facts mean this because Russell said so. And you can use him as an authority. If you want to, it's your choice. It's your contract. You can let that guy determine your fact. You can let Mark Lowercase K determine your facts. You can let Colin David Ivan Colin Miller determine, uh, credential your facts. Or you can use yourself and use the method that I use, which is to use the earliest nativity root meanings of a word or a particle, word particle, and consider those as I create the finite meaning. Now, that is not the hard and fast rule for me. I don't do that all the time. Sometimes I will take from also Black's Law Dictionary just because of the other contract party that I'm communicating with. Because I'm not, I'm, the point I'm making is I'm not just pulling stuff out of thin air. There is a base. There are sources I can provide as continuance of the evidence, which is the whole reason why you use fiction sources for your fact. Because number one, that's all that's available. And number two, if you don't, then I think you're going to have a lot of problems communicating if you're just making up meanings for words that are completely alien to what people are used to hearing. Let us see the proof. For what is the claim correct? For that is the claim. What's the claim? Can this technology prove every word in the etymology book written in fiction or facts? No, that is not the claim, unless that's your claim. I've never made such a claim. I have never made the claim that an etymology dictionary proves that fiction words are facts. I've never claimed that. So maybe that's the claim he's making. Thank you for your time. These are the issues I have with this technology. It is not based off of facts. However, it is based off of an etymology book, which W-I-T-C-H is opinion. Thank you, Brian James. So we have a name here. The credential themselves is Brian hyphen James. Um, again, he says it is not based off of facts. Well, how would he know that if he doesn't know what a fact is? He uses the word facts, but he never really credentials what a fact is. And if you do that, then I might have a much clearer picture of where he's at. But, but because, as I have made guesses, he doesn't know what a fact is. That's why he's saying the things he's saying. So here's my kuleana to his comment. I said, I will attempt kuleana point by point. Number one, based upon what I know about your knowledge level, your issues with correct sentence structure are rooted in psychological positions based upon my five plus years of tutoring experience. And that basically means from the multiple workshops I've done with the guy, the conversations we've had in these comments, I know that his issues are rooted in a psychological domain because he doesn't have closure, does not appear to have concrete closure on what a fact is. And therefore, nothing seems provable to him. 
Number two, the premise behind your suggested experiment is rooted in fiction thinking. Affidated is a fiction concept. I would never file such a thing. I congratulate you with your success. How about posting a public video with all of your paperwork and explaining with your face and correct name on camera exactly what you did, what the case was, and why you think you were successful? So just as he stepped forward in a comments field on a YouTube channel and suggested an experiment, he, co he, he couched it in the term at the beginning. He said, love and respect. And then he's talking about an experiment it's actually a challenge from where I sit. That's my sensation of it. I take it as a challenge, not an experiment. Because he didn't come here saying that he wants to learn correct sentence structure. He came here saying he has issues with it. So I'm a correct sentence structure teacher. I've been teaching for five plus years. This is a correct sentence structure channel with over 800 correct sentence structure videos. You come here saying you have issues with correct sentence structure, then you're coming here basically saying you have issues with me. That's a challenge. So this is how I gave Cooley on a back to that challenge. I upped the ante. I suggested that he go public and show the success of the affidavit that he claimed. The proof of the claim is with the claimant. He claimed to have success with an affidavit. Let's see it, Brian James. Step up to the carpet. I've been stepping up to the carpet for five plus years with over 800 videos. I don't know how many videos you have on your channel detailing your knowledge of grammar, but I do. I have a position and you come here and you have an issue. Well, I have a tissue. <laughs> Number three. With what you, are, you propose, you are placing your fate into the hands of the fiction system. I'm teaching here, friends and neighbors. I'm teaching. I'm telling him. You submit an affidavit to a court. You are submitting. Submit. Sub is under. Under. You're submitting to someone's authority. Bowing and scraping. Pleading. Whatever you want to call it. Awaiting judgment from them. I would never do that. I am the authority of my cases. I would never submit documents to them because if I do that, I give them jurisdiction. I give them jurisdiction. Do not adjust your sets, ladies and gentlemen. I repeated myself. It's important to cognize what I just said. Why would I do that when I am my own authority? This is the psychological difference between you and I. I will not submit to a fiction judge's opinion. Number four, etymology dictionaries are not the be-all, end-all authority of grammar. I explain this in many, many parse videos. They are used to certify the meanings of the facts in my dictionary. If you don't agree with the meanings of my facts, then you and I will not be contracting. Simple as that. Very simple. Number five, I have no proof that you actually exist. You could be a figment of my imagination. How can I certify that you exist? How far do you want to take your devil's advocate scenarios? What constitutes certification of a fact for you? So now I'm kind of being cheeky about it. Just like he's saying, you know, how can you prove that a word had a meeting 700 years ago? Well, how can I prove that you even exist? How far do you want to take this? You want to take it to the atomic level, the subatomic level? I mean, how far out into the land of what I would call ridiculousness do you want to go? Number six, if you want to learn correct sentence structure, then this channel is for you. If you wish to challenge it, then we could do a public live stream of you and I showing our faces and correct names, sharing continuance of the evidence of our grammar styles. You with your fiction babble and me with correct sentence structure. How about that? So again, I up the ante. I invite him up onto the geometric level playing field of a live stream. That way, there's no danger of anyone editing anything. It would be live. But he has to come up in out of the dark into the light, out of anonymity, out of Buddha 24, and get up onto the geometric level playing field. And then we can have a conversation and he can show me whether he can hold a position or not. Because that's what he's asking me to do. He's coming here with issues. 
with the, the grammar that I'm a steward of. So step up. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I knew how this individual was going to react. I did. I knew. I was hoping for a different reaction, but uh, here's what he said. Wow. So now you attack a grammar tutor acting like that. I thought you followed rule one and rule equal. I would say your performances says not so much. Not so much. I cannot read your response. It ends at five plus years. Well, Brian James, on YouTube, YouTube truncates long comments so that you only see the first little bit of it. If you read down to the bottom right-hand side, bottom starboard side of the comment, you will see two little words. The adjective pronoun, read more, dot, dot, dot. Read more, dot, dot, dot. And that is a hyperlink. If you click that, the rest of the comment will magically appear. You're welcome. I ask valid questions. I do not wish to use YouTube to make public claims. Why do you judge someone for not wanting to do that? I didn't judge anyone for not wanting to do that. I didn't know you didn't want to do that until you just said it just now. So how can I judge something I don't know about? Just because you do, I should. I never told you what you should or shouldn't do. You offered an experiment, i.e. a challenge to me. So I challenged you back. I stepped it up a level. I stepped it up a couple levels, actually. And just as I guessed, you know, this is I surmised. Uh, you didn't want to do it. I am not a tutor. I'm a master electrician. I do not tell you to go get a job doing that. I never told you to go get a job doing that. You came here, Brian James. You came to my vessel, me being a grammar tutor, knowing that I'm a grammar tutor and saying you have issues with correct sentence structure, challenging me to an experiment. And then I in turn, take your challenge, take it out of the fiction and put it up on a geometric level playing field to offer you to come up and explain your position and see if you can hold that position since you're the one with the issues coming here. I didn't ask you to come here. You came here of your own volition, unless someone was holding a gun to your head. I don't know. Well, I hope YouTube doesn't flag that. So he, that's the thing. No one's twisting your arm to be here, bro. That is silly to me. To each their own. I thought a man who truly thought this tech worked would jump at the chance to prove it worked. This is hilarious. I am disappointed. I would like to see if it worked. Fair enough. Not trying to anger you. Ever been to court for something? Yes. Did you use correct sentence structure? Yes. Thanks again for the rule one and rule equal and the knowledge sharing. Mahalo. I love <laughs> Maui. Love this place. Hope all is well with you and yours. Again, he couches it with this, what I would call saccharine closing. Again, I know this individual. I've, it's not like there's someone I don't know. I've spent hours and hours and hours with them. So I know the personality. It's sort of like those people who will make a joke. Like they'll, they'll say something to you like, Wow. You are dumber than a box of rocks. And then you turn around and look at them like, because it hurt your feelings or whatever, maybe. And you look at them like hurt. And then they look and then they say to you, oh, come on, I was just joking. It's like those types of people. So, yeah, I didn't get anywhere near angry with this. It was actually very amusing to me. Um, I have proven that it worked. The correct sentence structure works. I have proven that. I have shown documents online in multiple videos. Not all of them, because a lot of it's in the confidential, but some of my own personal cases I have shown in the public, in live streams and things like that. So I have done that. I definitely have done that. So my kuleana back to that was, number one, please quote the specific words I wrote that you allege are an attack upon you. And he's saying, remember, if you, at the beginning of the comment, he said, I'm attacking him. Now, do any of you out there, friends and neighbors, feel that I was attacking this man? 
in my initial response to him, my initial kuleana, do you feel I was attacking him? I find that this is the psychological position people will take when, number one, they're lacking in humility. And number two, they've basically been caught out. They've been caught with their pants down, meaning he must have realized, this is a guess though, this is a guess, he must have realized that he had no position with me. And so they go back and say, oh, you're attacking me. Because they can't, because they bring the heat. They try and attempt to bring a sort of heat. And then when I match that heat or go over that heat, now they feel attacked. Now they don't want to be in the kitchen anymore. They want to get out of the kitchen as fast as they can. This is just so how the, this is a perfect analogy to how the fiction will react when you use correct sentence structure with correct volition. Cannot take the heat. And then I explained the read more thing again. Uh, number three, you made a challenge to me. You call it an experiment, but it is indeed a challenge. And I explained why. So I accepted and upped the ante and invited you to step up onto the carpet to prove, maintain your position. The proof of a claim is with the claimant. I prove my claim of grammar tutor every day. I've been to many courts and created many courts. How many courts have you taken authority? Oh, typo. That's supposed to be authority there. Over, you chose to comment on my channel, and as per terms and conditions, I choose to teach you lessons. It's up to you to accept these teachings. No one is twisting your arm to be here, and you turned down my challenge, as I expected. Number four, I'm definitely not angry. I'm inviting you to participate with full closure, rule one, rule equal, and you decline. So I guess that's that. As a wise man once said, if you want to run with the big dogs, you have to get off of the porch. P.S. You may find this helpful. And then I link to a podcast quantum for the quantum grammar shoot fact versus fiction where i address this in, in a little bit more detail i guess the lesson uh one of the lessons one could take away from this is in order to learn this you really do have to humble yourself now some may say from the way i'm speaking in this video that i'm not humble well i'm not one to say whether i am or i'm not what I will say is I cultivate, I do my best to cultivate humility in my life, especially where this is concerned. And I also command that of my students. I will say certain things at certain times to see where they're at with humility, because it was that's the way it was done with me, with my tutor, Colin Raven, Ivan Farhard, Ivan Tahiti, Colin Aparin. Now, my way may be just a tad bit more abrasive than Raven's way. But I learned from him to temper that with, you know, honor and grace. And so I will poke at a student to see how they respond to that poke. Because trust me, if you challenge the fiction, fiction system and you get into a situation under duress, they're going to do more than poke you. They're going to twist you, turn you, clothesline you, body slam you, guillotine you triangle choke you, left hook, right cross you. They're going to do everything to you. There's nothing that I could do that could fully prepare you for what the fiction may do to you if you use correct sentence structure. So that's what I do. And if someone like this individual, Brian James, chooses to come to my platform, to my vessel as a guest, and they say they have an issue with the topic that I've made a claim of teaching, because that is the only claim that I'm making here, is that I'm a grammar tutor. And then he went on to say that isn't it the claim that correct sentence structure can prove an etymology dictionary term a fact? That is not the claim here. The claim here is that I am a grammar tutor. That is the only public claim that I've made, title I've taken in the public. When you come here and you challenge that, well, you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. I'm going to see where you really are coming from. Do you have a position? You thought enough or, you know, had the gumption to leave a comment like that. What did you expect to happen? Especially when you're, when you're taking issue with a topic that I'm teaching. <laughs> 
So what, what's that saying? You take the bull by the horns, what do you get? Well, that's what you got. And I knew that, that this is what would happen. I knew that um, you would back down. Which, I mean, that's cool too. But this goes for this goes above and beyond this. I'm peaceful and neutral. You can challenge me and we can still be peaceful and neutral. I mean, I'm open to any challenge from anyone out there who wants to challenge me on the grammar that I teach. You want to, First, you have to prove your grammar knowledge in order to do that. I can prove mine. Can you prove yours? If you can prove that you know how to commu communicate correctly with correctness, because I know I damn sure can, and you can too, well, then let's meet on the geometric level playing field, and let's see what's what. It's that simple. It's a grammar challenge. It's not necessarily a bad thing. It could be construed as aggressive, but I'm still peaceful and neutral. Just because you're challenging someone doesn't make you not peaceful. It doesn't make you warlike unless you're trying to hurt them. And it's not my volition to hurt anyone. It's my volition to teach people. And that was my volition behind my kuleana to Brian James, was to teach him to become open to the grammar. Because if your cup is already full, you can't add any more knowledge to it. And it appears as though his cup is already full. So hopefully, this has been a, a cool little psychological lesson for those of you out there. And hopefully it was for him as well. Now, I know he is a member, and I fully predict that he will cancel his membership and not comment again on this channel. Because at the end of the day, here, here's another takeaway that I forgot to mention earlier. He commented on my YouTube channel, okay? If he was sincere about his love and respect, about his not wanting to anger me or anything like that, if he was sincere in those claims, then he would have contacted me via email in the confidential and said, hey, can we try this experiment? And then I would not have given the kuleana that I gave here in such a fashion, the same manner. I would have probably tempered it, softened it, put the kid gloves on, and try to communicate with this guy. But no, he didn't choose to email me in the confidential. He chose to come here on my YouTube channel where the viewers can see what he's writing. So this is the rule one rule equal performance that I deemed appropriate and necessary for the safety and ages of my vessel, which remains safe and sound and sailing with correctness, through the waters. I'll shut down this mumbo jumbo right now. I'm going off into left field. Thank you very much, everybody, for watching. I appreciate it. Salute everybody out there. And um, listen to the next segment for more details on how you can learn this awesome technology. Brought to the public in 1988 by colon David hyphen win colon Miller. Full stop. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me. You can ask me whatever you like, and I'll do the same, and we'll see if this is something that uh, you're prepared to commit to. If you'd like to support the channel, click on the Join button underneath this video. There are two tiers of membership. Uh, the second tier has access to exclusive content not available to the public. Once again, thank you for watching. Uh, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Turn the notification bell to all so that you don't miss any of my premieres because I do post on a very consistent basis. There are over 500 correct sentence structure videos for here you to study on this channel my gift to you my fellow mankind thank you again and i'll see you in the next one